Hello and welcome to the second episode of Train Story Tales. Today we're going to be looking at a particular type of carriage where, that we have here. We have both examples of a restored carriage and also one awaiting restoration. Some people when they consider what we have at the Isle of Wight Steam Railway puzzle as to why we have such an odd collection of old carriages and items. And part of the reason for that is, throughout, is that throughout its history, the railways on the Isle of Wight have inherited hand-me-downs rather than buying new carriages. And here we have a, a picture showing the delivery of locomotives and carriages to Medina Wharf, just to the south of Cowes, uh, and that's dated 1932. An interesting photograph, it shows that there weren't very many health and safety restrictions in place at the time, and uh, no doubt there was the occasional accident. There is, however, an exception to this hand-me-down scenario, and that is when the ride to Shanklin railway line was opened, they had an awful lot of confidence in it. The town of Ride was booming, Ride Pier was having a horse-drawn tram pier built alongside the pedestrian pier, and it was clear that this was going to be the primary tourist landing area for the Isle of Wight. And so, exceptionally, the Isle of Wight Railway bought new carriages for their line from Ride to Shankton, which was later extended to Ventnor. And amazingly, it is those new carriages that we have here, both in unrestored and restored form. This is a photograph of Ventnor Station. It was opened in 1866. And although I don't know the date of this photograph, this was soon after it opened. And you will see there are parked there two railway carriages, very flat roofs. And those two carriages could be some of the carriages that we have got on site here. This is one of our unrestored carriage bodies awaiting restoration. But before I talk about it, can I just mention the metal underframe that it stands on? That is not part of the original. They were orig originally built on wooden underframes. But these were purchased by the railway in, I think it was the early 70s. The Ministry of Defence was selling off what we uh, refer to as torpedo wagons. It used to be the law that munitions, including torpedoes, could only be transported by rail. It was considered safer. And that's the reason why the docks, army bases and so forth all had railway lines going into them. They were surplus to requirements and as you will see, they are the perfect length for moving these carriage bodies about and for displaying them to the public. But when restored, they will not be on those frames. Now referring to the body itself, this is one of the original 1864 carriages bought by the Isle of Wight Railway for the ride to Shanklin and Ventnor line. And it was built by the Oldbury Carriage Company of Bromsgrove near Birmingham, a very big uh, carriage uh, builder of its stage. And amazingly, we have five of these carriage bodies in our possession. Amazing to think that five of the original, I think it was 24 or thereabouts, which were bought, still exist. This one was sold off uh, round about 1910 uh, and used as a holiday chalet at Thorness, uh, where it stayed until it was acquired by the railway, Isle of Wight Steam Railway, in, I think it was the 1970s. You will see at the top there, blue glass, blue and white glass. This is a second class carriage. It's got four second class compartments. You can just make out a door there. There's another one there, there and towards the end. But even on second class, they would have that, what seems to me to be a touch of luxury, that beautiful blue and white glass. And those pieces are all original. So that's what it looks like now. What will it look like? once it's been restored. This is a similar carriage of the same age and we're very fortunate in how we were able to fund 
this being restored. The Channel 4 uh, television company were planning a series called Great Rail Restorations, presented by Peter Snow. And they approached our railway, the Isle of Wight Steam Railway, uh, with an offer to contribute a substantial proportion of the restoration of the carriage you've just seen, if we could do it within six months. To give you some idea, it normally takes four years. And so we were set with a task of restoring what had basically been a garden shed into the restored carriage you've just seen. This is a picture of the carriage when it was in a garden of a house in Bembridge. It was given to the railway by Richard Vernon, who was an actor who appeared, for example, in the film Goldfinger, the James Bond film. He played a chap called Smithers, and he gave it to us in that condition. How much of the restored carriage is left? Well, amazingly, about three quarters of the main frame is still on the uh, restored carriage. It's amazing to think that it spent all of its life outdoors, over a century in particular outdoors, after it was decommissioned, and yet so much of it still remained in a reasonable condition capable of being restored. As with all of our uh, old big carriages, as I say, we've got five of them, they are very distinctive. They have a very low profile roof, very flatter, much flatter than normal. And again, you see this lovely distinctive blue glass. But don't be fooled, this is a reproduction. We couldn't use the original glass because it wasn't toughened. Modern safety regulations require that the glass in railway carriages is toughened glass so that in the event of an accident, it doesn't turn into injury causing sharp shards of glass. Another feature of old brick carriages is that the first class compartment door is six inches wider than the second class. You might wonder why that is. Well, it's just a theory, but perhaps it's so that the Victorian ladies' bustles could fit through a bit easier. But it's very distinctive. The other thing is that they're hinged on the right. All the other carriages we have have the hinges on the other side. That's just a, a little difference. As I said, this carriage, 1864, it was built. At the moment, this railway has got what we believe to be the two oldest railway carriages in use on UK railways. Both date the same year, 1864. One is this one, and the other one is another four-wheeler carriage we have of a completely different design which I'll show you in a later episode. So let's have a look inside the carriages and see what the difference between first and second class is. Well, here I am, sat in the luxury of 1864 first class. As you can see, there's plenty of room. I can stretch my legs out, not even reach the halfway point. There's a beautiful oval table in here, securely fastened to the floor, so that it doesn't fly about in the case of an accident. And it's remarkable to think that a carriage this old could have been travelled in by Lewis Carroll. He visited the Isle of Wight on a number of occasions in the early 1870s, and indeed he wrote The Hunting of the Snark at Sandown and it's very possible that he might have travelled in this very carriage. So what about second class in 1864? As you'll see, a lot less room, two bench seats, and indeed often in second class, these wouldn't be upholstered at all. So it's a very different position from first class, but you can see beautiful details, still got the blue glass, got a lovely ceiling, and an oil lamp ready to light. Visitors to our railway often ask why there's no second class. The wagon you have just seen is the exception. All our other carriages are first and third class. And to answer why there's usually no second class these days, one has to go back to 1844. Britain had a problem. The Industrial Revolution meant that there was a lot of spare labourers unemployed 
in the countryside. And meanwhile, the cities with their mills, cotton mills and so forth, needed people to move into the cities. And the president of the Board of Trade, William Gladstone, later to be prime minister, persuaded Parliament to pass an act which required all railway companies going into cities and big towns to run into the town or city first thing in the morning a train including third class and stopping at every station and at the end of the day going back in the opposite direction. The railways companies hated this because it meant that people who they would otherwise get second class fares from would travel third class. And to explain this in more detail, you need to understand what third class was. And here we have a dropside wagon. And literally, this would, in 1864, would probably have been the equivalent of third class. Passengers would be expected to travel with no seating, holding onto the sides, and probably with the residue of whatever was last in this wagon on the floor. That could be coal dust, chalk dust, any sort of rubbish but this was third-class travel. As I said, the railway companies didn't like it. They used to run very, very early and very, very late. These trains were sometimes empty. They're referenced in Gilbert and Sullivan's Mercado as parliamentary trains. But the Midland Railway Company hit upon a legal dodge. Basically, they took their third-class carriages, wagons, put roofs on them, put bench seats on them and upgraded them so that they were the same as the second class compartment that we were just in. They then scrapped second class and so complied with the letter of the law, though not the spirit of it, because of course they had increased the fare for third class to be the same as second class at the same time. And that's the reason why on many restored railways you will not see second class carriages carrying passengers only first and third. You have seen the skill and the craftsmanship of our restoration team. And it's got to be remembered that most of the people who've done that work are actually volunteers. They give their time free, freely to the railway. And if you've got free time, perhaps you'd like to consider volunteering. Give you some idea of how important it is to us. We have about 35 paid employees we have about 500 volunteers. This railway could not run without them. You don't have to have any particular skills. I had none when I came here seven years ago. Just an enthusiasm. Full training would be given, and we'd love to see you. That's it for this episode. Thanks very much for watching. Goodbye. See you next time.